Over here, I've got the hole ready. Billy and Molly had helped Aunt Maud and Biddy Bid become friends again after not speaking to each other for years. But Aunt Maud and Biddy Bid were still having to work at their friendship. Is this it, Biddy Bid? My gift to you, Aunt Maud. It's a cutting from Biddy Bid's very own plum tree. Thank you very much, Biddy Bid. My pleasure. Now, we'd better get it into the ground straight away. Yes, I know. Don't put it into the ground too deep. I haven't. And make sure you don't overfill the hole. I won't. And whatever you do, don't overwater it. I do know how to garden, Biddy Bid. I am the best gardener in the whole town. Biddy Bid was going to argue that she was just as good a gardener. <coughs> but, wanting to be friendly, she said something else instead. Are you going to enter the giant pumpkin contest this year, Aunt Maud? Giant pumpkin? That's Big Bertha. I won my first giant pumpkin contest with that one about 20 years ago. Wow! I won the following year with this one, Tiny Tim. <laughs> that's not tiny, that's humongous! <laughs> but of course, the following year was my all-time record. Oh, I mustn't have put the photo back after the big newspaper mm. borrowed it. Let's see if I can find it. Look at this one! Have you ever been in a giant pumpkin contest, Biddy Bit? Nope. But you'd be good at growing them. You're almost as good a gardener as Aunt Maud. <coughs> Here it is, Goliath, the all-time record holder. Wow! Mm. I've got an idea. Hmm? What about you don't grow a giant pumpkin this year? What? And let someone else take my trophy. I was thinking you've won enough times. Perhaps someone else should get a go. Like Millie and Molly. Ah, them? What do they know about growing pumpkins? I could teach them. Oh, but I'm the best pumpkin grower in the whole town. How many prizes have you won? Just because I haven't entered any contest doesn't mean I couldn't grow a bigger pumpkin than you, Aunt Maud. I see. Well then, I'll teach Millie and you... I can teach Molly. We'll see who can grow the biggest pumpkin. And so it was decided Millie and Molly were going to grow giant pumpkins for the giant pumpkin competition. But not exactly in the way Millie and Molly would have liked. Are you sure Molly and I can't grow a pumpkin together? Uh, fiddlesticks! A bit of competition will challenge you both to do better and then you'll grow a much bigger pumpkin than Biddy... Um, I mean Molly. On my little peach, a bit of competition won't ruin your friendship with Millie. Well, only if it's fun. Oh, it will be. Now, here's my pumpkin seeds. Hold out your hand. These will grow into the best pumpkins you'll ever see, so plant them out. Now, we're going to treat these seeds with gentle love and tender care so they'll grow strong. And then we can completely smash the opposition. That will all be fun. And so Aunt Maud says that keeping the seeds warm with hot water bottles really helps them germinate. Millie, you're not talking to the opposition, are you? Molly's our opponent. But Molly's my friend. Fiddlesticks, and... I don't want you talking to her about our pumpkin growing tricks. It would be better if you didn't talk to her at all. I see. And did you tell Millie about my special seaweed fertiliser? Well, I might have said something. Let's make it the very last piece of information you share with Millie. You don't want them using that information against us, my little cherry. Now, how exactly did Millie use these hot water bottles? But it wasn't like Millie and Molly to keep things from each other. They were friends, after all. And now, they could only spend time with each other at school. This giant pumpkin growing competition isn't as much fun as I thought it'd be. No fun at all. But soon, things went from bad to worse. Aunt Maud's desire to have Millie win at all costs was causing her to do some less than polite things. And this is every last bag of seaweed fertiliser you have? That's it. Oh, Biddy Bid won't be happy. She was going to come in this morning and buy some herself. Won't get another load till next season. Pity. Millie! Molly! <laughs> Biddy 
bit. Aunt Maud, I heard you use my technique with hot water bottles to help your pumpkin seeds germinate. I might have. And I see you've bought some of the fertilizer I recommended. Yes. Oh dear. I'm afraid I might have bought the last lot. What? But, but, you don't need all that. Don't I? Come on, Millie. We've got a giant winning pumpkin to grow. Bye, Molly. Bye, Millie. Well, fiddle my fiddle. Oh, oh that pumpkin is growing nicely. Let's see how Biddy Bits grows without her fertilizer. Oh, oh. What's wrong, Aunt Maud? Oh, my oh. back. Oh. I'm afraid you'll be in hospital for a couple of weeks, Aunt Maud. Fiddlesticks! Oh! When Biddy Bid heard that Aunt Maud was in hospital, instead of doing the friendly thing and visiting her, she decided to spy on Aunt Maud's pumpkin. doing well. Too well. Let's see how big you are. Sorry to say, Biddy Bid, but you'll be staying here in hospital for a few weeks. Fiddle and faddle. Well, do I have to stay in this bed? Afraid so. All the other beds are taken. <laughs> Molly, would you please tell Biddy Bid that I'm sorry that she's hurt herself, but she shouldn't have been spying in my garden. And Millie, could you please tell Aunt Maud that I wouldn't have gone there if she hadn't deliberately bought all the fertilizer so I couldn't have any. Tell Biddy Bid that I have a reputation to uphold and can't afford to have Millie lose. Tell Aunt Maud that Molly is going to win anyway. No, I'm not going to win. What? Me neither. Why not? We're giving up the competition. No! Why? Well, we're worried that the competition will hurt our friendship, like it's hurt yours. You've even stopped talking to each other again. I see. Oh dear. But we'll still come and visit. Maybe tomorrow. Bye! <laughs> Aunt Maud, I've been a silly gooseberry. We should have been setting those two girls an example, and instead... Instead, they've set us an example. Well, we'd better do something about it. So the next day, when Millie and Molly came to the hospital to visit, they were in for a surprise. So my good friend Biddy Beat has had the most wonderful idea. I think it was my dear friend Aunt Maud who actually had the good idea. Well... We had the idea that both of us together would help you, the both of you, grow your giant pumpkins. We're very sorry that you got the wrong idea from us. There's nothing wrong with a bit of healthy competition. It's just... just... We were just a pair of silly pineapples. I am no such thing. All right. I'm a silly pineapple too. <laughs> <laughs> we just took it all too seriously and spoiled the fun of it. So... What do you think? Okay, we'll do it. Good. Ah. As long as it's fun. So for the next few weeks, Aunt Maud and Biddy Bid gave advice to both Millie and Molly. Now make sure you build a windbreak to protect your pumpkins. Oh, that's a good idea. It'll stop the wind from drying the pumpkins out. As soon as we've finished this one, I'll help you with yours, okay? I always get good results when I whistle to my plants. Really? Well, you'll have to try that. <laughs> Here, let's go and place your pumpkin next. Thanks! <laughs> Before anyone knew it, the giant pumpkin competition was upon them. And Aunt Maud and Biddy Bid were out of hospital just in time. Here are the finalists. And the finalists are... Farmer oh. Hegarty, oh. Molly and Millie. Oh. 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 
the judges have had a difficult time. The three final giant pumpkins are very close in size and weight. But the winner is... Farmer Hegarty. <laughs> I can't believe I finally beat Aunt Maud. And second prize is awarded jointly to Millie and Molly. Congratulations. Well done, you clever potatoes. Well done, Farmer Hegarty. Perhaps next year we should work together from the beginning. Yes, we'll show Farmer Hegarty how really big a pumpkin can be. As long as it's fun, right? Mm. Yes, Millie, as long as it's fun. Congratulations, Farmer Hegarty. Yes, you it was close thing. Congratulations, Millie and Molly. It was the first really cold day of winter. But Millie's dad knew how to warm things up. A fire! Pass me another pine cone, please, Millie. I'll do it, but I like to. <laughs> One each, then. We wouldn't want an argument now. <laughs> we'll have this ablaze in no time. Why don't you use the big wood? We will, but we have to get the fire started with smaller, lighter wood, like the pine cones. It's called kindling. Pine cones make great kindling. When the fire's going, then we can add the bigger logs. Kindling. Later that day, Millie and Molly took something warm to Millie's neighbour. We'll be back before dinner. Good luck. Shush, Taffy Bogle. Hello, Mr Limpy. We've brought you some nice warm soup. Well, that's very nice of you. Soup for lunch and fish for dinner. I hope... Hope? I'm hoping Tom and Jack are going to catch something. I couldn't pay them, so I gave them the last of my marshmallows in return. But I'm afraid I don't have anything to give you for the soup. Well, if you let us play with Taffy Bogle... That'd be enough. All oh, right. <laughs> Let's get that soup inside first before it cools down too much. Oh, this soup is warm. Why haven't you got your fire going, Mr. Limpy? It's a cold day today. Can't get the fire going. I've run out of smaller pieces of wood to get it started. You mean kindling? That's right. I just learned that. <laughs> Taffy Bogle's none too happy about not having a fire. It'll be very cold tonight. We'll cheer him up and get you some kindling too. Walkie! <laughs> <laughs> so the girls took Taffy Bogle out near Farmer Hegarty's farm, where they knew just the place to find some kindling for Mr Limpy. That tree will have a million pine cones under it. Well, we don't want too many. Remember what Mr Limpy said? The bottom could fall out of the box. <laughs> no, Taffy Bogle! Taffy Bogle! And all the while they made sure that Taffy Bogle stayed firmly on the lead, especially near the river. They knew Taffy Bogle couldn't swim. Not very far away. Jack and Tom were trying to catch dinner for Mr. Limpy. I've got something! I've got something! Finally, their patience was paying off. Here it comes! Oh! A boot? This is hopeless. We've been fishing for ages. And now I'm out of bait. How can we catch any fish for Mr. Limpy's dinner without any bait? Why don't we try some of these marshmallows as bait? The fish might like marshmallows. OK. The box is nearly full. Isn't nature clever, making such a beautiful thing? I think nature made a mistake with this one. <laughs> no, Taffy Bogle. This isn't a toy. It's to help Mr Limpy light a fire. <laughs> He really likes that pine cane. Soon the two friends were on their way back to Mr Limpy with a box full of kindling. You're going to be nice and warm and toasty tonight, Taffy Bogle. <gasps> oh no! The pine cone!
I've lost all the pine cones. Oh, Taffy Bogle! We'll have to take Taffy Bogle home before he catches a cold. You mean we won't have time to get any more pine cones for Mr Limpy? No. No fire for you tonight, Taffy Bogle. Come on. Jack and Tom were still having no luck catching Mr. Limpy's dinner. Nothing. Oh, we've used up all the marshmallows. We can't even give them back. <sighs> Whoa! Huh? What are those things coming towards us? Baby otters, I think. A whole herd of them. Nah, you don't get herds of otters. Look, they're... they're... they're pine cones. Pine cones? Hey, I've huh? got an idea. Quick, get, get your fishing net. We'll catch them instead. It took Millie and Molly quite a long time to walk home. Time enough to add frustration to their disappointment. Huh? Taffy Bogle's dry. We didn't have to worry about him catching cold. He dried out on the way home. No way! <laughs> Where are they going in such a hurry? Funny. Looks like they've got baby otters in their buckets. When Millie and Molly arrived back at Mr Limpy's house, they were in for even more disappointment. Oh, just what I needed. More pine cones for kindling. Huh? Some of these will be dry enough to use tonight. Oh, here you are. Hey, they're our pine cones. No, they're not. They're ours. No, they're mine now. I just bought them. But you can't. They're Funny-shaped one was one we picked up for sure. <laughs> Even Taffy Bogle knows it. That's his favourite one. We fished them out of the river. Well, we put them in the river. Yeah, well... Oh, hang on, everyone. One at a time. Jack? But, Dad... Jack first. You'll get your say. When we found them, they didn't have anyone's name on them. <sighs> Millie? We sold them to get enough money to buy Mr. Limpy some fish for dinner. Huh? Yeah, we couldn't catch any fish, even with marshmallows for bait. But we wanted the pine cones for Mr. Limpy too. He needs them to start his fire tonight, to keep him and Taffy Bogle warm. But he won't have any dinner if we give the pine cones to you. And we need the pine cones or we won't have a nice warm fire tonight either. Poor Mr. Limpy. He's going to miss out. One way or the other. Hmm. There has to be an answer. We just have to think about it. I've got an idea. Millie asked her dad to hook up the box trailer to his car and everyone worked together to collect a whole lot of pine cones. I think there'll be enough pine cones for Taffy Bogle to keep that pine cone now. <laughs> Come on, girls. That sun isn't getting any higher in the sky. Yeah, and we've still got to get that fish from Mr Limpy. It took the rest of the afternoon to fill the trailer with pine cones. All the shops were closing by the time they got back to town. Jack and Tom would have to hurry if Mr. Limpy was going to have fish for dinner. Still got that money? Yeah, and some extra pine cones too. Well, hurry up. The fish shop will close any minute now. Come on. Hope they make it. Now let's get these pine cones to Mr. Limpy. Any sign of Jack and Tom yet? Not yet, I'm afraid. They should be back by now. Well, perhaps the shop had closed. Never mind. At least Taffy Bogle and I'll be able to have a nice warm fire, thanks to everyone's efforts. It's them! Jack and Tom! <sighs> <laughs> well, that's not the welcome I was expecting. Sorry, Dad. We were hoping it was Jack and Tom with the fish for Mr Limpy's dinner. Oh, dear. We've got so many pine cones, I thought you might like some more. These should see you right through winter. That's very kind of you indeed. Perfect. Not exactly perfect. Perfect would have been fish for Miss Limpy's dinner. We're here! 
Here's your fish, Mr. Limpy. They gave us an extra big one when they heard we were buying it for you. Why, thank you, Jack, Tom. Hooray! Wait, there's more. Because we got more pine cones than we needed, the fish shop lady gave us something else for the rest of the pine cones. You'll never guess. Marshmallows! Roasted marshmallows. There'd been enough fish for everyone. And Mr. Limpy was very grateful, not just for the food and the fire, but also for the friendship Millie and Molly and Jack and Tom had shown him. Here's the first roasted marshmallow. Who wants it? Me! I don't think all four of you can have it at once. Well, why don't we wait till you've roasted five? Then we can all eat them together. That's better than arguing. And in return for all your good deeds, I'll tell you the story about how I got my limp. Oh, I thought we could watch television. Well, you can do that if you like. But I thought you might be interested in a story about a rocket-powered racing car. Yeah! Any princesses in the story? Of course. And wild animals? Most certainly. And yellow? Hmm. I'm sure we can find some yellow in the story somewhere. Hooray! The people in Millie and Molly's class were excited because they had visitors. What is he wearing? He looks funny. Why has he got that white stick? Good morning, class. I'd like you to meet some guests. This is Mrs. Doyle. Hello, Mrs. Doyle. And this is Ellie. Hello, Ellie. Hello, everyone. I'm going to be in your class now for one day every week. I go to the blind school on the other days, and Mrs. Doyle is my teacher. Oh, yeah, that's because I can't see. I'm blind. Is she blind? She's blind. That's okay. I was born that way. And for the boy who asked me about my cane, it helps me find my way around. Look <laughs> at me. Don't laugh at me. I can see you're not shy, Ellie. And you can certainly hear very well. Millie, Molly, will you take care of Ellie as she settles in, please? Uh, yes, Miss Blythe. Bye, children. I'll be back in a few weeks to see how Ellie's fitting in. So please make her welcome. Millie and Molly were always happy to help out, but this time they were feeling nervous. Ellie was so different. What would they even talk about? Uh, so this is the playground. Aren't you going to show me around? Okay. Um, I guess we'll start this way, Ellie. As they took Ellie around the playground, Millie and Molly found they were bursting with questions and soon found things they liked about Ellie. Why are you coming to our school now, Ellie? And why only once a week? Well, the teachers want me to be in a school with kids who can see because when I grow up, I'll be working with people who can see. Oh, that's the swings. <laughs> Thanks. Ellie was confident. And I'm only coming once a week because it's a tryout to see if I fit in here. How will Mrs. Doyle know if you're fitting in? She said it's about being accepted, which means I'm making friends, I suppose, and that the other kids don't make me feel, you know, like the odd one out. We're back where we started, Ellie, and you didn't fall over one thing. That's so cool. Another case sold by Supercane. And Ellie had a sense of humour. Can I have a turn with Supercane? Watch out, Molly! Oh. <laughs> Molly, you silly Billy! She fell into the sandpit, Ellie! <laughs> Have a turn, Millie. See how you go. And Millie and Molly were very impressed by Ellie's skill with Super Cane. Ah! Oh. Oops! The swing? <laughs> yep, afraid so. <laughs> So it wasn't long before Millie and Molly looked forward to seeing their new friend Ellie once every week. There she is! Ellie! But not everyone was so happy to see Ellie. Humphrey had never forgotten how everyone had laughed at him on that first day Ellie arrived. Once upon a time, there was an old man and an old woman. 
They had no children and they lived alone in a little old house. One day, we'll show her what it's like to be laughed at, won't we, Hoppy? His nose was a peanut. And George, this'll get her. He had a row of currant buttons down under his coat. The little old woman was about to put him in the oven to bake when she was surprised to see the gingerbread man jump up from the tree and skip across the Can table. Can I hear a frog? Stop, little gingerbread man, she cried. Don't worry, uh, I'll get it. <laughs> hmm. Here's your frog, Humphrey. Well, Humphrey, bringing a frog to class. I'm not sure what he's going to learn. <laughs> Don't laugh at me. This is your fault, Ellie. Well, it looks like it's your frog, Humphrey, not Ellie's. And it's not a very funny joke to play on someone. Now, don't bring it to school again. Understand? Yes, Miss Blythe. But, of course, one little setback wasn't going to stop Humphrey from trying to get Ellie laughed at. Millie and Molly were getting tired of Humphrey's tricks. But what would Mrs. Doyle think of them? She was coming back the very next week. Ouch! Mrs. Doyle might decide Humphrey had made Ellie feel like the odd one out and Ellie would have to leave and find another school. Oh, I know it doesn't feel fair, but sometimes it can take Humphrey a long time to learn things. And Ellie can't stay where she's being made fun of. I promise you, the teachers will make the kindest decision for Ellie. Well, class, The big day came too quickly. It was time for Mrs. Doyle to decide whether Ellie should stay or go. Can she stay, please? Well, Molly... Before I decide, I need to watch the class and see how well Ellie's fitting in. Take a seat, Ellie. <laughs> oh! <laughs> oh, Ellie! Oh. <laughs> it's only a wolfy caution, Ellie. Listen. I'll have that, thank you, Molly. I know Ellie has a great sense of humour, Humphrey, but it's not nice to play tricks on her. Mm. Oh. 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 Give me ball back! Humphrey, please stop playing tricks on Ellie. She might be blind, but it doesn't stop her being really nice. <laughs> And fun! Don't make her feel like the odd one out. I'm not doing anything wrong. Stop picking on me. After lunch, Miss Blythe organised an outside game. It was a scavenger hunt. The first team to find all the things on the list would be the winners. You need to find the following things. Listen carefully. Something smooth. Something rough. Something soft. And something that smells nice. <laughs> Tom, Jack, Sophie and Meg are one team. Millie, Molly, Alf and George are another. Poppy, Chloe, Humphrey and Ellie, you're the third team. Ready? No, it's not fair. I don't want her on my team. She won't be able to find anything and we won't win. <gasps> oh, Humphrey, enough. Ellie will be as good as anyone else. You still have a lot to learn about blind people. Now, everyone ready for the scavenger hunt? I've got an idea. Hurry up. It's smooth. I've got the smooth thing. 
Soon, each team was only missing one object. Ellie's team had to find the thing that smelt nice. How about this stick? Oh! oh. Yeah! Not exactly. I can smell something. A pine cone! It smells really nice! Hooray! I like the stick. The winning! Election. Poppy, Chloe, Humphrey and Ellie were the winners, with the other two teams happily tied in second place. But not everyone was happy. Oh, it's not fair! I lost my frog, Hoppy! He was right here in my pocket! Now I'll never get him back! Oh. Everyone be quiet! What is it? Can you hear him? No, but Ellie is super good at listening. And she might be able to, if we can keep quiet. OK, well... Our team was over here. <gasps> here he is! Hoppy! Special. I found him myself. Want to hold him? Okay. Thanks. <laughs> it's a shame that everyone in class isn't so good at listening, Humphrey, or Hoppy would have stayed safely at home. Hmm. Pay attention to Miss Doyle. Well, everyone, I've been watching your class very closely today. I think that Ellie has done a super job of fitting in here. And everyone in the class has helped her. So well done. Yay! 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 Ellie's been so good at making friends that now she can start coming to your school two days a week. Yay! Everyone was happy that Ellie was able to continue coming to their school. But no one was happier than her new best friends, Millie and Molly. Millie and Molly's class was just finishing their show and tell. Well, that's most interesting, Humphrey. I'm sure that looks exactly like the flying saucer that brought your dog from Mars. See, I knew it was. <laughs> you may sit down now. Thank you. Now, today, I've brought something for show and tell. <gasps> oh, oh, I can't wait. Wait. It's beautiful, isn't it? A budgerigar made of china. So it's very delicate. I saved up for it especially. Yes, Molly? Did it take very long to save up for it? It seemed to take a very long time. <laughs> I was so impatient to get it. But it only took a couple of weeks. <laughs> <laughs> the longest weeks of my whole life. That afternoon, Millie and Molly saw something they wanted to save up for too. Oh, look at those doll's clothes. I think that pretty yellow just would look just right on Dolly. And Jemima would just love the yellow and blue striped pyjamas. They like yellow and striped. <laughs> <laughs> but Millie and Molly were going to be disappointed. They didn't have enough money for the doll's clothes. Not nearly enough. Don't worry, Dolly. We'll find a way to get you those clothes. That's right, Jemima. Molly and I'll just have to earn some more pocket money. The two friends decided they could earn extra money taking people's dogs for walks. <laughs> Make sure Taffy Bogle is back in time. He mustn't be late for dinner. We will. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Mr Limpy was happy to pay Millie and Molly to walk Taffy Bogle more times than they usually did because they knew about walking Taffy Bogle. The two girls knew Taffy Bogle couldn't swim and to keep him away from the river. Uh-oh. Come on, Taffy Bogle. Let's go another way. Good boy. And Millie and Molly knew something else about walking Taffy Bogle. To always keep Marmalade locked up in the house. So Taffy Bogle wouldn't want to chase her and be too hard to control. Here's your money. Thank you, girls. Thank you. Come on, Taffy Bogle. See you again tomorrow, girls. Bye-bye, Taffy Bogle. See you soon. <laughs> A whole week of extra 
walks with Kathy Bogle and we still don't have enough money. This is going to take forever. Jemima will be so disappointed if we don't get her those new clothes soon. Dolly too. So Millie and Molly began to walk Humphrey's dog too. Two dogs meant twice as much money earned. Millie and Molly! Poor Humphrey had chicken pox and couldn't walk Zoldan himself. Don't forget, Zoldan only understands Martian. We'll remember! Zoldan! Ziggada! Doa! San Zigadoo! So Millie and Molly spoke Martian to Zoldan and made sure they didn't go near the river with Taffy Bogle. <laughs> And always, always made sure that Marmalade stayed inside. Good dog, because both dogs like to chase cats and would be hard to control. <sighs> I wish we could get those dolls clothes now. Me too. But we still haven't saved enough money. And do you see the nice dolls house, huh? Oh, and that toy pony. Yeah. Jemima would love to ride that. And Dolly would love to hold tea parties in that doll's house, wearing her new clothes. But we're going to be at high school before we can pay for those. High school? The two friends were very impatient. They wanted everything, and they wanted it now. So Millie and Molly added Barker and Bouncer to their dog walking service to make more money faster. You don't want to be in trouble again for making all that noise. I thought they'd learn their lesson and didn't bark at cars or want to chase them. They just need to know who's boss. They won't ever do it again. Well, maybe we should keep them away from the traffic to make sure they don't have anything to get excited about. From then on, Millie and Molly made sure they didn't walk Barker and Bouncer anywhere near busy roads. And they always spoke Martian to Zoldan. Zoldan, zig is that door. And they didn't take Taffy Bogle anywhere near the river. Come on, Taffy Bogle, away from the river. And always, always, always they made sure that Marmalade stayed inside because all the dogs like to chase cats. This dog walking is so easy, Millie. But with each day, the girls got more and more impatient as they waited to save enough money for the things they wanted to buy. So it wasn't long before Millie and Molly's impatience got the better of them. Come on, Molly. Not just yet. You need to finish your sandwiches. But, Mum, it'll be too late to walk the dogs. Well, then you shouldn't have spent so much time looking at all those nice things in the toy shop window. You have to eat your sandwich. Okay. <coughs> and don't eat so fast or you'll make yourself sick. Soon, Millie and Molly were so impatient to get to the dog walking, they forgot one very important thing. Come on, Molly. Coming as fast as I can. They forgot to make sure that Marmalade was locked inside the house. Mr. Limpy, we're here to take Taffy Bogle for a walk. As usual, Millie and Molly tried to avoid busy streets for Barker and Bouncer as Marmalade followed along. And as they remembered to speak Martian to Zoldan... Zoldan! Ziga do donasta! Marmalade tried to get even closer to Millie. Maybe we should walk another dog. They're all so easy to control. But as Millie and Molly turned before getting Taffy Bogle too close to the river, something terrible happened. But Taffy Bogle wasn't interested in swimming. He just wanted to chase Marmalade.
spittle and my fishing rod. You'd better stop those crazy dogs. Something worse could happen. Sorry, Bush Bob. <laughs> But Barker and Bouncer weren't interested in chasing cars. They just wanted to chase marmalade. Blimey! Oh! Farmer Hegarty! Farmer Hegarty! Are you alright, Farmer Hegarty? I'm fine, I think. But you'd better stop those animals before they cause some real damage. But Soldan wasn't interested in listening to Millie's calls in Martian. He just wanted to chase Marmalade. this poor pussycat and oh you've made me drop my lovely china budgery gar and it wasn't long before everyone was at the police station yes yes officer taffy bogle is my dog i live next to millie as you know and i would like to say that taffy bogle is very rarely any trouble to anyone now my oh dear what a terrible mess and all because Millie and Molly had been too impatient. So, Millie and Molly set about walking only one dog at a time, patiently saving up to buy Miss Blythe a new China budgery gown. Oh, thank you both so much. Just like the original. And Bush Bob a brand new fishing rod. Oh, it's a beauty. Better than the old one. And they saved enough to replace the plants damaged by Farmer Hegarty's truck at the park. How do you like your new clothes, Jemima? I think Dolly loves her new dress. And eventually, they even saved up enough money to buy the doll's clothes they wanted. And as for the doll's house and the toy pony, well, Millie and Molly will just have to be patient. It was the first day of the school holidays and Molly couldn't wait to get to Millie's house to play. 15, 16, 17, 18... Hi, Elf. Hi, Molly. I'm counting all the ants. I'm going to Millie's house. We're going to have special holiday fun too. Bye. Have fun. <coughs> Watch out, Molly. The monsters from the moon are invading the park. I'll save you. <laughs> Thanks for saving me, Humphrey. Wait for me, Tomcat. There's killer robots, too. Millie, 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 I'm here. to do. Um, well, what about a picnic with Jemima and Dolly? But we always do that. This is the holidays. Let's do something special. Ooh. I wish Tomcat and Marmalade were wild animals and we could live in a cave. Yeah. Or they could be the royal lions of a beautiful princess and they lead a handsome prince to find her castle. But they're just cats. Yeah, and we don't live anywhere interesting. And that might have been the beginning of a very boring holiday. 
Until finally, Molly had a very good idea. I just had a very good idea. Whatever Millie and Molly were doing in Millie's backyard, it was a complete mystery to anyone watching. <laughs> Millie and Molly had fun together, working away almost all day, until finally they had built their very own cubby house. Before Molly went to Millie's house... Oh, my princess dress! Molly started to make a plan about how to dress up for their cubby house and make it even more fun. And my crown! But she really should have talked to Millie first about what she was planning for the <laughs> cubby house they shared. So far, I have counted 125 and... Well, Millie and I are going to make our cubby house into a princess's castle where the princesses wait for their handsome princes to ride by and they spend every day with their two pet lions and they live happily ever after. And do any robot monsters come and try to eat them all? Of course not, Humphrey. Well, it sounds dumb to me. <laughs> oh, Humphrey, you don't scare me. When Molly went inside, she was in for a nasty surprise. Why are you dressed like that, Millie? I'm an adventurer, and our cubby is an ice cave, which is at the North Pole, and Marmalade and Tomcat are our pet polar bears. And we hide in here from the abdominal snowman. But I thought it would be a castle in a fairyland, and we would be princesses, and Marmalade and Tomcat... No, Molly, an ice cave. We're having an adventure. You can't be a princess and have an adventure. Yes, you can. But it has to be a castle and no abdominal snowmen. No, an ice cave. And pretty soon, the most terrible thing happened. Well, it's my backyard, so it has to be an ice cave. Then I'm going home to my house. See if I care. Huh. <gasps> Come on, John. Marmalade didn't understand what Molly had said, but she could tell something very sad had happened. The next day was a very strange day. Molly tried to play at princesses by herself. Hmm. Oh, when will my prince come? <sighs> but it wasn't much fun on her own. And even her favourite riddles didn't seem to interest her. <sighs> and Millie too was having a lonely day without anyone to play with. Even Marmalade was nowhere to be found. <sighs> Marmalade was too busy watching, hoping that Tomcat might come to visit. But there was no way Molly was coming to play with Millie. So Millie decided to find ah. someone else to play with. Come on, Marmalade. Ah. Who goes there? It's me, Millie. And the password is yellow. Huh? What password? 
password. Oh, never mind. Would you like to play adventures with me, Humphrey? I've got a nice cubby. It's a cave at the North Pole. I don't play with girls. Hmm. Can your cubby be a rocket and take us to Mars to smash all the robot monsters out there? Um, well, yeah, I guess so. Molly, too, went hunting for someone to play with. 1,455, 1,456. Hi, Elf. Hi, Molly. Would you like to play princesses and princess and find a pretend castle? Well, I would like to, but first I have to finish counting all the ants. Would you like to help me? Hmm, well, okay, Elf. Tomcat! Tomcat! Stay here! We're staying here! Poor Tomcat thought they were going to Millie's place to see Marmalade. But, alas, Millie and Molly weren't friends anymore. By the end of the day, poor Molly still hadn't been a princess once. There'd been a lot of uninteresting ants to count with Alf. And poor Millie had been to Mars and smashed lots of robot monsters with Humphrey, but hadn't visited the North Pole, nor had a pet polar bear all day. <sighs> oh, Molly, why'd you have to be so stubborn? <sighs> oh, Millie, why'd you have to be so stubborn? Don't rush, Tom Cat. The swimming pool won't even be open yet. Tom Cat. very much. <laughs> Molly? Sorry. No, you go. Well, I wouldn't mind that much if the cubby was a princess's castle. Really? Because I was going to say I would like to have an adventure in the Arctic with you. Really? I'm sorry, Molly, about, you know, me too. <laughs> so for the rest of the holidays, the cubby was a princess's castle, but located at the North Pole, where Millie had a pet polar bear named Marmalade, and Molly her pet lion named Tomcat. <laughs> Humphrey was able to join in too, as the abdominal snowman. <coughs> the robot monster from outer space. <coughs> and Alf got to count all the royal ants at the North Pole. 23, 120. And they all lived happily ever after.